Hello there guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. This is going to be another weekly vlog. I wanted to do a themed vlog this week, however, I just decided to relax and just read whatever I felt like and finish things up because I do have some commitments coming up again, so I wanted to really focus on Legendary Readathon this week as well as finishing Bleak House. So I'm gonna actually continue this vlog until the end of the month so that I can finish Bleak House in this vlog. So finishing Bleak House and um, what else am I reading? Vampires, vampire things. I just read yesterday and today, I read the short story, The Vampire by John William Pol Polidori, which was written with him and Lord Byron and Mary Shelley and Percy Shelley. And it was like us, it was like they were writing spooky stories. It was a competition. And he wrote this story during the competition. And he wrote it based on Lord Byron. And you can definitely tell. Um, I really enjoyed this vampire story up until like the very end. Um, there was one thing that happens with the plot. If you want to skip a spoiler for this story, skip like maybe 10 or 15 seconds ahead from this point. But it really annoys me that our main character's parents don't recognize Lord Ruthven when he dates their daughter. And then he ends up taking the daughter and killing her. Why wouldn't they recognize the name? They they were the ones who wrote to our narrator and told him, don't hang around with this guy, he's dangerous. And now they're fine with him marrying their daughter? What's up with that? So the plot fell apart for me at the end. But I still really enjoyed it up until that point. I had a great time with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And today I've been listening to New Moon a ton. I think I'm going to have no problem finishing it this week. Um, I might have to get some other work done that would mean I don't work. I don't get to listen as much as I did today. Today I did a lot of work that gave me the chance to listen, but we'll see what happens with that. I'm hoping I can finish it before our live show on Sunday or Saturday. I don't remember. But yeah, so Bleak House, Vampires, Joan of Arc. I'm still only like 20% into Joan of Arc. It's so slow for me, guys, but I'm really enjoying it. I'll I'll tell you more when I can, but I still haven't met Joan, so there's not that much to say yet. And um, Emma's Book Club got postponed for the Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. So I might not read that until, yeah, later. That'll be at the beginning of September. So maybe I'll try to fit that in this week too. Also, okay, Bleak House spoiler for the next 10 or 15 seconds. I could not believe that Joe was alive. I really thought that he died because we discussed this on the live stream and we all kind of thought that Joe was probably dead. Um, so I was really happy to see him pop up again in Bleak House. But it was so sad when he died. I was just like, oh, the tears, the tears. Oh, that was so sad. Anyways, um... And I did not see the proposal coming either. I'll leave it at that. I did not see that coming at all. That was so out of the blue for me. I, you, There might be more than one proposal, but there's one that comes first to Esther. And I did not understand her first proposal at all. I was like, really? Okay. That's, I mean, I kind of love it, but the summary keeps being like, it's not romantic at all, <laughs> the cliff notes summary. So what I've been doing and what I know Victoria's been doing, she gave me this idea, was reading the cliff notes summary and then listening to the audiobook. And that's been going great. I have been coloring while I've been listening to the audiobook after reading the summaries for every chapter. So yeah, I'm loving it. It's so good. I, I love this book. I love Bleak House. I'm loving everything I'm reading. It's fantastic. That's the end of my update for today. I will update you when I finish some more things. <laughs> Bye! Hey guys, it's Friday. It's 12.45 and we're on a super windy road right now, which is perfect because we're about to go eat lunch. We're really excited because our favorite restaurant had just been closed for fire damage for a couple weeks and they just reopened. So we're going to Jimmy's and I'm gonna get a tri-tip burrito. And Kevin always gets the chicken club. <laughs> Oh, 
Look at Kevin's chicken club. Isn't that amazing? Hey guys, it's Friday. So I already updated you in the car on our way home from physical therapy, which by the way went really well. Yay. Um, and I just wanted to tell you, I talked to Victoria yesterday. Actually, I talked to Victoria's Voxer yesterday <laughs> um, because she had Voxed me a couple days ago after she saw I finished Cloud Google Land. And she asked me some questions and it just made me think so much more deeply about the book. So I wanted to kind of share some of my deeper thoughts about the book. What I realized when we were talking about Cloud Cuckoo Land, which by the way, she loved, she gave it like, it's like one of her favorite books of the year, was that I think it was the contemporary perspectives that kind of dragged the middle down for me versus the historical and the sci-fi perspectives. I both, I loved both of those. I thought his like genre fiction sort of elements were amazing. I would definitely read sci-fi or, you know, historical fiction that he put out. But for me, because this was so big and I came out on the other side of it, not being able to describe what it was about, not really even knowing what it was about. I, I still can't really describe it. I feel like that's kind of the fault of the author. Um, he wasn't very focused in this book. I feel like it was all over the place and it was enjoyable. It seemed like he was having a good time writing it, which oftentimes mean I'm, I'm gonna have a good time writing it if he was having a good time writing it. But it wasn't very organized. It's like the opposite of Brandon Sanderson, right? It's more like a Stephen King way of writing where it's more diffuse and random at times. Um, there's a lot more stuff in there that you could easily see it being revised away. But like Anthony Doerr, kind of like Stephen King, is so well known because of his previous, I think, All the Light We Cannot See or something like that. I don't know. I know that he's written some other things that make him like well beloved and famous. I think that he probably was very comfortable writing this book and just felt like he could write whatever he wanted, which clearly people ate up. I think people really did enjoy this novel, but we have like five or six perspectives, five or six timelines. None of them are like the main one. They're all main. And again, I can't really describe what it's like at the end of the book. So I just felt like, yeah, it was very diffuse, enjoyable, but there were slumps because I, I didn't enjoy the contemporary perspectives. And there were two timelines that were in the contemporary space. And then three timelines, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see how difficult this is for me? But regardless, Victoria and I did have a really great discussion about it and I really enjoyed reading this with her. It's always a pleasure reading with Victoria. So just wanted to share the thoughts that Victoria made me think about, about Cloud Cuckoo Land because she made me think about it a little bit more. As far as other things happening and which I'm reading, there's a lot of exciting things happening this weekend. We have, we're gonna be discussing it, there, the Saturdays um, with Tiffany's Patreon. We have our discussion of uh, Legendary Readathon reading wrap-up live show. There's a Kate Howe Patreon meeting for three men in a boat, which I've been trying to get into because it's really fun. It's just a delight. But because it's very like rabbit trail heavy, I'm having trouble wanting to go back to it. You know, once I've stopped listening to it for a day or a couple days, because I, and it's kind of short too, I just feel like I'm not f tracking with it very well. It seems like very hyper all over the place kind of a book. Um, so I'm enjoying it, but it, it feels like it was written yesterday. It's crazy. It feels like so contemporary and does not feel like a Victorian novel, but I, I, I'm enjoying it, but it's just, I think, I don't know if I'm gonna get to it because tomorrow is the discussion for that and I have a lot of work to do. And I've been focusing a lot on um, studying Korean because I just got a subscription to the website Talk To Me In Korean and my mother-in-law came over twice this week so that we could watch some K-drama because we just got rid of Netflix but I had it for a few more days so we were trying to fit in as many episodes as we could before it's gone. And I'm so happy that she's hooked to it. I think 
she might try to get Netflix so we can finish our K-drama, Crash Landing on You. And I have some other ones in mind that maybe we could watch. So yeah, I've been doing other things a lot this week. In addition, I've been trying to work two hours every weekday. And that's going really well for me. I really enjoy that. And I will work a little longer if, if there's something that I'm working on that I want to finish. I have like four press releases to write. And I'm loving doing that, so sometimes I work a little later than two hours, but working two hours five days a week will get me ten hours, which is technically all I'm supposed to work. But I've been sometimes working a little bit over that. So, and as long as my boss is okay with that, I'm gonna keep trying to work a little over that. I'm just gonna push myself a little bit, but not too much to where I get, you know, feeling not good, so. I also just finished the BTS memoir Beyond the Story and I think this is great for BTS fans, honestly. I think I would definitely recommend it to ARMY. And there were some, uh, there was, it, it felt like very even throughout, whereas I know that their career wasn't even. <laughs> there were some moments that were really high stress and then there were moments where they were just really sailing. And so for me, for it to feel like super even all the way through was a little bit, a little bit strange for me. So that's all I would probably say. Um, yeah, it wasn't a very exciting, I would say, memoir. If you're not a fan, if you are a fan, then you'll, like the songs that I'm super familiar with, I found it really interesting when it was talking about those songs and the creation of those songs and what era each boy was in for those songs. That's really fun for me. Um, and then when there were albums or songs that I wasn't as familiar with, I was kind of zoning it out a little bit. So, still a really good memoir and I hope that more K-pop memoirs follow because I would love to hear like a memoir of TWICE or 80s, like please, I want to hear it. So yay, finished Beyond the Story and I've been reading Joan of Arc a little bit in the mornings. I didn't get to today because we had to get to to physical therapy but I've been trying to read it for like half an hour to an hour in the mornings like before I even get out of bed I just grab my phone and start reading and just to give you a picture of how slowly I'm reading this I'm still only at 22 percent so um yeah I, I only can read about one or two percent in that time so that's obviously very slowly I find that if I do that though I I can read it more quickly later if I read it along with the audiobook but um yeah, I'm just really having trouble going, I'm going very slowly with it. And that's just the nature of me and history. But that's okay, I'm enjoying it. I'm almost 50% through New Moon, so I, I don't know if I'll be able to finish it before Sunday. But I'm really enjoying this reread of New Moon. I remember now why I loved it. It's really fun to have Bella. <laughs> I mean, she's so emo. But it's fun because the lore expands in this book to include Jacob and the creature that Jacob is, the, the, the kind, yeah. You know that book one is all about vampires. Well, book two is all about what Jacob is. So I'm really, I'm just loving it. I, I remember being so riveted as I was reading this the first time. There were just so many secrets to come out. And I just feel like Stephanie Meyer is like an expert at like pulling your emotions taut. If you can get past the flaws of the book, like how judgmental Jake, how judgmental Bella is of everybody around her, and um, how controlling Edward is, you know, um, if you can kind of get past some of those things, I think you can really have a good time with the um, Stephanie Meyer series still. So I'm really glad that we ended up choosing this as an unofficial buddy read and that I ended up with volume two because I'm loving it. It's it's just like such a break for my brain. <laughs> Guys, can you believe how many books I've read this month? It's crazy how many I've actually finished and I'm about to finish Bleak House too. Like I'm over halfway through a lot of books. <laughs> I've been reading so much lately. I'm so proud of myself. As far as Bleak House, I am 88% through and still just listening to it and loving it. Loving it so much. This is definitely gonna be a favorite book of the year. I always have like way too many things checked out, but I don't know. I just got a hankering to try some Doctor Who fiction. <laughs> so I checked this out. Who knows? We'll get to it. And The Warden. My friends have been telling me to try The Warden. And um, so Cho Nam Ju, the author of uh, Kim Ji Young 1989 or something like that, um, 
I've been wanting to try her because Crystal mentioned that she just absolutely loved it. She actually reviewed it and I wanted to check that out. So some of the other things, oh yeah, this was on Instagram. So this is about Dostoevsky's wife. I think it's historical fiction. Um, started this with Kevin. Both of us were kind of bored. We didn't even listen to it today. This would be for my mythology prompt for Tiffany's book bingo. That's one of Tiffany's books because we're sharing our, I shared all my library cards with her so that she could have a good library because her library doesn't have that much. I haven't made any progress in traffic. And I have made some progress in Nothing to Envy, but not tons. And I have not really progressed in the way we live now. I think that's it. I just got this in because Stephanie told me I would love this. And maybe Jenny too. Maybe they both did. To be fair, I think that a lot of the things that people complain about with Stephanie Meyer, with her toxic character traits of her characters, I think a lot of it is just done for humor, which is something that teen girls understood when they were reading it, I think. Like, uh, there's this moment that I was just listening to where <laughs> Bella uh, is in her bedroom at night and Jake jumps in through the window and she's like, get out now, and he's like, no. And he just stands there and she's trying to push him out her window and he won't do it. Um, and it's done, one, to show that he is way stronger than her now, which is a big change because of what happened to him. He didn't used to be that strong, but it's also just done for humor and for the sake of tension. It's not necessarily like a behavior that people would actually do <laughs> unless they actually are toxic people in real life. But in the book, it's just, it's like entertainment value. You know, it's a fantasy book. Yeah, it's a romantic fantasy for teenagers. It's just supposed to be entertaining and funny. And the other thing I wanted to mention, I've been listening to a ton of great podcasts on Talk To Me In Korean, their website. That's been taking up a lot of my time, listening to their podcasts. And it is so worth the $61 for a whole year. I can't believe, I'm gonna go so fast. I just discovered that it's only been two years since I started Korean because I uploaded a video announcing that I was learning Korean um, and I was maybe like a month into the study at that time, I would guess. I was like a month into study. So yeah, I've only, and that was in August of 2021. So I've only been learning for two years. So I'm like really pleased with myself right now. Um, Cause I thought I'd been learning for like three years. <laughs> I feel like it's also pretty accurate to how girls feel when suddenly over the summer boys that they've been taller and stronger than their whole lives suddenly shoot up and become these monstrous beings that they don't even recognize anymore that is definitely being portrayed <laughs> in this book That is interesting because I, d I also rate things on like, how much did I enjoy? I didn't used to factor that in as much because I would just assume that it was my fault if I wasn't enjoying a piece of classic literature. I'm just reading it wrong, but now I'm like, no, if I'm not enjoying it, then I'm rating it low because it's my rating. It doesn't have to be an objective rating. It just has to be my thoughts on a book and that's what people are interested in they're not interested in like objectivity necessarily they want to hear what your thoughts are because they know your taste to some degree so but i even though this was a struggle at times for me i i enjoyed it so much all the way through <laughs> that i'm i'm actually i'm rating it similarly to naomi as far as how i'm rating it but i'm rating it like very high. It's gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. So we just enjoyed it differently. Hey guys, we just got back from town. So I got a package from a subscriber. Thank you so much, Kurt. I'm eager to check this out. So I'm just gonna open that up while I'm talking here. 
So today we had Bleak House, the second to last Bleak House meeting. So we only, I only have like a hundred pages left in Bleak House. Tomorrow, so later today I have the Saturdays meeting with Tiffany's Patreon. Tomorrow I have the live show for Legendary Read Bond finale. He emailed me saying he supports brick and mortar stores which I totally love. Honestly, if there was a way for me to have a wish list on a website that was private, like I tried thrift, was it thrift books that I tried? There was some other websites that are like cheaper that I tried, but their wish lists weren't private. Like you couldn't hide your address. So I don't know if you guys know of a place. <gasps> oh my goodness. The Hobbit. <gasps> the Red Ring. This is, Kurt, you recommended this to me, didn't you, Kurt? <laughs> so I mentioned in a video a while ago that I wanted to read more about Japan and I'm pretty sure Kurt was the one who recommended this to me. Thank you. Okay, that makes me a lot more likely to read it, honestly, getting it sent to me. Wow. Oh my gosh. <gasps> the Flash of the Ring. You know I love paperbacks, right? I mean, paperbacks, these like pocket paperbacks are my thing, I love them. Return of the King. Oh my gosh, I love these covers. Look at that. Oh my gosh, wow, wow. So this is the two towers. Okay, wow, wow, thank you. Oh my gosh, no way. This is the copy I had when I was a kid. Oh my gosh. Look at this, guys. The Chronicles of Narnia. Okay, I have too many books over here. Oh my gosh. I actually own, I owned this as a kid, but it fell apart because I read it so much. Thank you so much. It has the illustrations. I think those are like the original illustrations. Yeah, wow, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to get reading now. Book mail haul. Thank you so much. Wow, that was so generous. That's mainly what I wanted to talk to you guys about was that. Yay, and Victoria and I are gonna buddy read the rest of the Twilight series. Tomorrow we have our watch along in Victoria's Discord for the first video. I think we've talked about watching maybe more of the movies. We'll see. And yeah, that's mainly it. And I also got a bunch of picture books for the library. So I don't know, they, they just all look gorgeous. I just, and they're all like from the same publisher, I think. What is the publisher? They, they do some interesting things. There's like, um, they did the poetry of Walt Whitman was one of them, but like set to this kind of mo these modernist like illustrations, like really gorgeous. So this one is the world beneath the brine. I'm pretty yeah, Walt Whitman. So they did a bunch of like poetry things where they were taking a poem, like a famous classic poem, and putting imagery to it. What's the publisher? I need to find out. Um, creative Editions, the Creative Company, the Creative Company, and they're well known, I guess, for their beautiful illustrations and also for their nonfiction, like core nonfiction. So this is the one that caught my eye and this is this sent me down the rabbit hole when I saw this. It just looks so gorgeous. So this is Sashiko and Sashiko is a type of fabric or a type of like sewing fabric. It's like a, dang, I'm sorry, I'm a terrible researcher. Stitchery, it's like a type of stitchery that was invented in on this island of where, I don't know. It's in, it's during Japan's Edo period, so maybe it, it's like a, an island that's a part of Japan, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Am I researched? No, I am not. Hey guys, okay, it's a little bit later. I just had to show you. I got some snacks today from the store and I'm super excited to try them. I, I don't know. Apple cider donut cashews. Let's try it. Had to cut that out. 
They're good. Yeah, I didn't realize you were walking behind me. <laughs> I definitely like these. These are so good. That's my second one. <laughs> the first one you guys missed. Okay, let's try the pumpkin spice almonds. These are dangerous. Honestly, I could just sit here and eat this whole thing. I love nuts anyways. You don't even have to put sugar on them for me to love them. <laughs> Finally, a pumpkin spice thing I can eat. Good morning, guys. It's Sunday. <laughs> I've just been laying in bed for about 45 minutes and reading the biography of Joan of Arc. Uh... And that turkey just surprised me. I just got up and there he was. I feel like they're getting bolder. They're just getting closer to the house. Kev just said they just ran up here to our, our glass window and pecked at it. <laughs> Hi, it is now. 6.47 on Sunday, August 27th, and it's been a great weekend of like social things, and I'm on, I'm 87% through new moon, and we had our live show today, and that was so fun. Thank you so much to everybody who came, and thank you so much to my co-hosts. You guys were amazing, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think we had a really good discussion on like vampires throughout literature. Like it, it really... We talked a lot about a lot of different vampire literature that we've read. Um, so I feel like vampire was a great theme for the first year of Legendary Readathon. We're talking about themes already for next year, so I definitely think we're planning to do a next year. And um, I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. And Naomi criticized Twilight today on the live stream, and everything that she said was correct. <laughs> and I still love it. I don't know. I really love the werewolf element in New Moon. It's so fun. But then as soon as Alice comes back as well, I'm just so happy. I'm loving it. I'm just listening to it and uh, getting some work done. So I, I haven't been working on work work this weekend because I completed my over 10 hours already. So um, happy me. I got to play this weekend. So... Um, yeah, I've been adding citations to a Dostoevsky essay that I will be publishing in uh, a journal called The Unexpected Journal, which is a play on The Unexpected Journey. So, and it's about, it's about Dostoevsky's short story, The Beggar, no, not The Beggar Boy at Christ's Christmas Tree. It's uh, The Christmas Tree and a Wedding. And I've been... <laughs> working on this essay for too long. It's over a month to you already, but the editors are so kind, so I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. I've been late on like every single one <laughs> that I've submitted to them. Bless them, they put up with me. But anyways, yeah, so I'm working on the citations. Hopefully I can turn that in tonight. We'll see, it's almost seven and I need to make dinner and I need to stretch. I always need to stretch. I'm always behind on my stretching. <laughs> Anyways, that's kind of what's going on. So I just wanted to update you and say I, I totally forgot to um, vlog. I was going to ask my co-hosts if they wanted to say hello um, to the vlog, but I know that Sandra was just waiting for Victoria to finish, so I felt kind of bad asking them to like, so do you want to say hi to the vlog? When they were like, clearly it's time to go. So. It was a long, a nice long live show. We talked about the historian though. Dia, I have it. <laughs> I think I, I think I might add this to my TBR. I just filmed my TBR and wrap up today. So we'll see, maybe I can get to this. I kind of want to reread the original Twilight too. Now that I've read book two, I kind of want to go back and reread the original. But we'll see what I have time for. I still need to read the Joan of Arc book, which by the way, I'm 34%, 35% through the Joan of Arc biography, making progress, slow. But sure, I read a little more this morning. Um, mornings seem to be the best time. Yeah, okay, and tomorrow we have the Twilight Watch Along. That's all I wanted to say. Um, she actually just announced the fifth book, which is the third. When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves 
also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. Hi. Hi. Hey guys, it is now Monday. So we're moving into the second week of the vlog. Won't be a full week, but it's Monday, August 28th. And I just had a meeting with my wonderful therapist. And we were talking about how I really want to make my YouTube channel a really welcoming place and I want to be very Enneagram 9. I want to hear everybody's perspectives and I want everybody to feel welcome here and she was just reassuring me that not everybody is going to be um, wanting that unity aspect um, but what I'm doing is I'm inviting everybody to share their perspectives here so even when I get perspectives that are like disagreeing with me or criticizing what I say that's okay and it doesn't make my perspective or myself inferior it's just people sharing their perspectives if somebody's saying something that's different from what I said in my video that maybe I shouldn't have said what I said or that my perspective is inferior and she's like no you're just both bringing something to the to the table you're both bringing your perspectives and neither of you is inferior but talking with each other is bridging the gap and you're you're enriching each other's perspectives and so i want to really think of it in that way so i just want to thank you guys again for leaving your comments because you really are enriching my life and my perspective with your perspectives you guys make this fun honestly without comments who would do booktube without commenters it's just not fun <laughs> thank you again hey guys it's tuesday morning and my father-in-law just picked me up to bring me to an appointment and i'm really excited to show you guys um there's a giant hay truck that i think he's gonna be maybe unloading and there's a whole bunch of goats that are being that are protected by dogs right over here i'll show you there's one of the dogs <laughs> He's like alerting that we're here. Isn't he cute? Here are all the guard dogs. <laughs> American, I think there's some like uh, European oh. sheep dogs or something like that. Wow. Those other ones out here. I've there. never seen dogs like that. Yeah. And do you? Are there a lot of different kinds of goats? Yeah. Lots of different breeds. All I can tell is the different colors. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're following us. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. So many. Wow, there's some big guys. Mmm, I smell horse. <laughs> So those are the Clydesdales? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Huge. Wow. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah. You take it out, go. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Okay. I, I, I don't really know how to show you guys the size of this horse, but he is gigantic. Wow. I wish there was some like scale I could show the vlogs to show how huge they are. Oh, yeah. well, compared to the dogs. Wow. Oh yes, compared to the dogs. Like the dog oh my gosh. So apparently the owner of those horses used their work horses. She would use them to pull like carts and like carriages and stuff and she would actually show them at at shows. <laughs> horse shows. So cool. I've never been that close to a horse like that. Wow. Here comes the hay truck. And there's the sque squeezer truck. Well, my appointment has been canceled, but at least I get to see this. This is pretty fun. See my box right there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 
Oh wow, they're full. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that box? There's another one. There's there's more. Yeah, they're picking Whoa. Them right now. Yep, so the pears are being picked. It's yeah. it is pear season right yeah. now. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back home now and I've been doing some Bible study. I've been preparing for our Daniel Bible study tonight. So excited for it. We're starting chapter 10 in Daniel and yeah, it's just been, all the prophecies have been fascinating and it's been so great to discuss it with everybody. My mom's been coming and Dia and Joanna. So I just love those ladies. I'm so grateful for them in my life. They are my church. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you though uh, that I've been having such great focus on mornings when I start it with reading Joan of Arc. Before I even get out of bed, I just roll over and grab my phone. I've been waking up a little bit early, so I've had some time to just lay in bed and read on my phone. And finally, now that we've met Joan, it's just really going faster and it's so exciting and I'm loving the biography now. So yay. And because I've been, whenever I have time to just roll over and read right away, that really helps with my focus the rest of the day. I don't like to do my Bible study on my phone. I used to just do my Bible study on my phone that way when I first woke up. But I really prefer to actually get out my Bible and have a notebook ready to take notes. And it just, it's, I remember it better if I do that. And I want to remember my time with God. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. I also just wanted to encourage you guys, if you're Christians and you're not in a community group, I wanted to encourage you to try to get into one because it's really amazing to study the word and discuss it with other people who hold it as highly as you do and take it as seriously as you do. And also because we pray with each other, whenever there's an answer, we have quite a big group of people who are studying together now and um, not everybody or who are praying together now. And so whenever there's a prayer that we've been praying for that's answered, we all notice it. And it's so encouraging to be part of that group and having everybody's prayers answered. It's just, it's amazing. It happens all the time now. Hi, I'm just laying down and doing exercises on the floor, but I remembered, I finished, I finished New Moon and I loved it. I just loved the whole thing. Hey guys, it's now Wednesday, so it's August 30th, so I'm going to end off the vlog by just saying I finished Bleak House and it was so good. The ending wrapped up so well. It was everything that I wanted. So anyways, I'm going to go, I'm going to have a Zoom call like right now. It's already one, so it's right now. I got to go, but just wanted to end off the vlog by saying that's the last thing I'm probably going to read this month or finish this month. And I can't wait to talk to you more next month. And I hope to hear from you down below. Talk to you soon.